Our story is that 10 years ago, Julie and I were on the brink of divorce. And it was a result of us living by, uh, I guess you say, maybe the ways of the world, the ways of society, uh, all the things that society impresses upon us in terms of what we need to be successful. You know, the, the money, the job, materialism thing, the house, the boat, and all those different things. Five couples that we hung around from college, the women in this group were all very career-minded, but what took place there is I just would hear their conversations around the room. I would hear them talk to one another about their promotions and how much money they're making now. And then they would come to me and their voice would literally change. I could hear it. They'd say, are you still staying home with your kids? I felt as though after a while that I wasn't being appreciated. We kind of explain it as emotional needs. And what I know now is that we stop doing those things for each other. And, and when we don't do that, uh, we start to look for replacements, if you will. Other things that we can do or engage in that's gonna bring about a sense of fulfillment. And eventually, unfortunately, we began looking for it in other people. And fidelity became very much a big part of our relationship on both of our behalves. She accepted a job in San Antonio, which was about an hour and a half south of Austin. She finally decided that the commute was too much and I'll just stay in San Antonio. I was doing all of the things I used to depend on her to do, i.e. taking care of the kids, homework, soccer practice, and things of that nature. I just simply grew to the point where I felt that I didn't need her anymore. He said, you're unhappy, I'm unhappy. I think we just need to quit playing this game. I think we need to get a divorce. And I just, it was so weird how immediately I said, okay. Like it was like it was no big deal for me to even say that because it was almost as if that's how we were living our life anyway. And so we went to this therapist and in essence got a hundred dollar history lesson as to how our marriage relationship was kind of like the Civil War. You know, Greg, you like the North. Julie, you like the South. And maybe you guys are just not meant to, to be together. Maybe you should divorce. And we had already gone to our pastor. We had already gone to a counselor who thought, you know, that what was the point of your marriage? Maybe you have to realize that you weren't really meant to be together. We walked out of that office thinking, see, that, he's right. I mean, there's something, we married the wrong person. I've married the wrong person. It's what, are, what did I do? Now I've got two kids, but oh well, they'll, they'll be fine. What is God's plan for marriage? What does our church teach about marriage? We're like, Shh, we don't know, Father. And so I quite naturally got the Bible out first. And there it was, Ephesians 5, the words, wives, be submissive to your husbands. But as I continued to read, the next few words I saw was, but husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, like, like Christ loved the church. And Christ died for the church. It began to dawn on me that just maybe some of my own selfishness was contributing to the demise of our marriage. He had called me into the room to share with me what our church taught and what God's plan was for marriage. And I can tell you truthfully that that is the day that I truly fell in love with him. She said, well, this is great, but what do we do? I said, well, I think we need to pray. And so for the first time, we got down on our knees and went to God in prayer. His prayer was, Heavenly Father, you know, it, it's, we tried it our way, we tried it society's way, and that doesn't work. We truly ask you to come into our marriage and ask, and have you show us how to work, do this thing called marriage. And we even went further to say that, and if you deliver us from this evil, we would commit the rest of our lives to working in some type of marriage or family ministry. I think at that point we had tried everything else and nothing worked. And now we had a semblance of understanding that, that maybe this God can, can help us in our marriage relationship. But too many times in our lives we find that we want others to serve us, especially our spouse. But when we flip that around and begin to see our responsibility to, to serve them as Christ served us, uh, then that can begin to, to allow for a change to take place. When I started recognizing that my job was to help build him up into the man that God created him to be, but I couldn't do that until I recognized and understood the woman God created me to be and started living that out. It was amazing because I had never felt that. It's like that spot that in my heart that I was trying to fill with everything else, the money, the materialistic stuff, the working out, I mean excessively, the trying to be something I wasn't. All of a sudden it was filled with what it was supposed to be filled with and there became a sense of peace and love that I'd never felt before. And a lot of times those difficulties that we experience is God's way of saying that, hey, you need to wake up. I'm not a part of your relationship. God gives you more than what you ask for. And in this whole situation, I am amazed every single day
at the man that God gave me as a gift that I used to think was a burden. Uh, we created an organization, a nonprofit ministry called the Alexander House, which is dedicated to marriage education and enrichment, helping others come to understand our Father's plan for marriage. In the last nine and a half years in our ministry, we've worked with over 900 couples, and there's only been 18 couples that we have not been able to assist back. The hope that I get from that is they now in their lives understand the importance of God, not just having God somebody that you go to church and visit on Sundays, but having God as a part of your life and living it out in your home. But it doesn't take 10 or 15 years to make it better. It's like going into a dark room and flicking on the light. When we put Christ in our marriage, instantly there's light, there's hope, there's peace. Marriage takes three. Everything can be healed. God can create a, a, an atmosphere of love. When He is the center, everything can be healed. Everything. I don't think a marriage is ever too broken to be saved. Um, I think once that marriage relationship comes together, um, it's truly to death do you part. God has shown me what an incredible gift He's given me. And I'm here to tell every person that no matter what you've gone through, Every single marriage is worth working for, every marriage.